if you don't know what you want to be when you grow up and you're 30, that's just fine. But I don't want to have to blame you for not exposing yourself to what you can be when you grow up. If you're sitting home watching football and say, I don't know what I want to do with my life, visit a new thing every weekend, go on a trip, talk to experts in all manner of tasks and, uh, you know, visit a chef school, visit a, a geology expedition, just do things. And if you like it, you'll probably be better at that than anything else you choose to do because you you will invest even your downtime doing it. And as the saying goes, pick something you would do for free and make that your career. And you'll never live a sad day in your life. So that's one variant on a pick something that you love. You wanna be independent minded. Listen to people's comments, people have life experience. Don't ignore it. But what you want to do is fold it in to your own sensibilities, provided you have sensibilities to begin with. Otherwise, you become this ping pong ball of batted back and forth between one person's suggestion and another. Do we matter? So the cosmic perspective is incompatible with your ego. Okay. I should say your ego is incompatible with the cosmic perspective. The cosmic perspective shows you how small we are in size, in time, in space. And if you go in with a high ego, you might resist that. You might say, no, I'm important. I, we know one of the greatest gifts of modern astrophysics to civilization, dare I call it a gift, is the knowledge that the atoms of your body are traceable not only to the Big Bang origin of the universe itself, but especially to stars that have manufactured those elements and later in their lives on death exploded, scattering that enrichment across gas clouds so that their next generation of stars would have planets and on at least one of those planets, life. So we are not just Figuratively, we are literally stardust. So when you go out and look up at the night sky, yeah, your urge is I'm small and that's large. And yes, you're alive in this universe, but there's another way to look at it. The universe is alive within you. You have kinship with the cosmos. That feeling to me is greater than any ego you could have possibly walked into the room with. First, that feeling borders on spiritual. Second. Third, we have trained ourselves to equate being special with being different. You're special. You do something, think some way that no one else does. So I'm special. Well, let me turn that on its head and say, maybe we're special, not because we're different, but because we're the same. All humans are stardust. All humans share a chemistry with all a biology with all other life on Earth. There's one genesis on this Earth. We have DNA in, you have DNA in common with a banana. DNA controls chemistry. It controls metabolism. It controls all kinds of things that are prescribed in the DNA, and that's where we have commonality with other life forms on Earth. So why not look around and say, I'm not special because I'm a different, I'm special because I'm the same as you, as others, as the tree, as the brook, as the animals, you know, the woodland creatures. And we can all sit here and look up at the night sky and say, yes, we have kinship with the cosmos. I feel large because of that, not small happiness and meaning where does where does that come from in in your perspective what i have found is is an urge people have to search for meaning is it under this rock behind metaphorically right is it under a rock i'm going to search under is there meaning there? is it behind a tree 
if I join this group, will that will be, will I find meaning with them? If I and I think to myself, okay, go ahead. But what you do is relegating meaning in your life to a search. Suppose you don't find meaning. That'd be a force of disappointment in your life. You're setting yourself up to be disappointed if you don't find meaning. A meaningful life is learning something new tomorrow that I didn't know yesterday. Otherwise, it's a wasted day. You know the prisoner who, who puts X's in the boxes on the wall for the day they get out? I have that in my head, and the day that I get out is the day I die. All right? And what these boxes remind you of is every day you're alive, you're one day closer to death. So there's one fewer days in there to accomplish something that you might have wanted to accomplish. So I want to keep learning about our world, about each other, about things I don't otherwise know about. And there are people who only read things that they agree with or that they already know about or that it's their, they're feeding some urge to be validated. I have books on my shelf at my bedside. Every book is a subject that I either know nothing about or I completely disagree with going into the book. I said, well, maybe it'll change my mind. I'll learn new ideas. Most people must have just books that continue to feed their own interests. And that is the best way to not grow in this world. So one of my measures of meaning is how much more do I know about the world tomorrow than I did yesterday? Because almost any path you take will make you wiser as a person. So I value wisdom that gives meaning to my life. A new perspective is not just knowledge. No. What is the arc? It's, it's, there's, there's data. Data can become information. Information on further study becomes knowledge. And after enough time, when you see how the knowledge plugs in and applies, it can become wisdom. Wisdom is the distilled essence of all the details. Generally have no detail in them at all, do they? Wisdom is what's left over after you've forgotten all the details. <laughs> it's the distilled essence of it all. So I want to be wiser on the porch, at, on my rocking chair. I don't want to be the old curmudgeon. In my day, we did it best. No, I don't want to be that guy. No. So that's one source of meaning. Another, spend a little bit of your life lessening the suffering of others. I don't mean redirect your life. Some people do. They work in soup kitchens and start not-for-profits to serve. Yes. I, I, I'm not that person. No, because my the universe is what calls me. But in my day, in, in a week, do something that lessens the suffering of someone else. If you lessen the suffering of others, you make a better world. And don't we all want to live in a better world? Do you carry with you the emotions? I could be happier if I were doing this, and how come I'm not? And all of a sudden, well, then I must be miserable if I'm not as happy as I could be. No, I don't measure day to day. Am I happy or not? I, I, it's not the measure. Yes, it, it's in there, but that's not the metric. The metric is, am I successful at what I'm doing? Am I as good at this as I can be? If you're not going to try to improve, go home. Find something else. <laughs>